Got another question for the aromatic chemistry playlist and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video. Hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. So make a start. So there's a few things you can say for the first question. So the one I would go for is add indicator to confirm acidity and then you would add sodium carbonate and you shouldn't see any bubbles. Alternatively, you could say this one, add bromine, and the bromine should be decolorized, and you also get a white precipitate. And the other possible answer here is to add FeCl3, and you should get a violet or purple color produced. Moving on to the next part, so can carbon-13 spectroscopy be used to distinguish between J, K, and L? So we'll have a quick look at how many carbon environments each one's got, and see if it's possible so starting with compound J, we've got an environment there, an environment there, there's another one. These are equivalent, so that's number four, they're equivalent, that's number five, there, that's obviously untold, so that's number six. Moving on to compound K, so we've got these are equivalent, these are equivalent. That one's obviously unique, so that's number three. They're equivalent, so four. So five in this one, so different again. Um, compound L, well, there's no symmetry in this molecule at all, so they're all different. So there's eight environments in that one. So that's what I'd be writing up. The student's correct. Compound J has six carbon environments, K has five, and L has eight. Moving on to the mechanism now, so I've just got compound J's structure there and we're told to do the mechanism for substitution um, with chlorine at the 4 position. So the first part of the mechanism is using the catalyst. I've gone for AlCl3 as my catalyst. You could have gone for FeCl3 there. So chlorine reacts with the AlCl3 and you get the Cl plus electrophile and AlCl4 minus. If you'd gone for iron chloride, you would have gone. You would have got FeCl4 minus there. Next part of the mechanism is the pair of electrons from the pi electron cloud are going to come out and be attracted to the Cl plus electrophile. That's going to generate this intermediate here. So just remember that we need to cover five of the carbons in the benzene ring with this partial um, delocalized electron cloud, positive charge in the middle. And we're now showing this hydrogen that was already on the benzene ring because the next thing we need to do is show it coming off. So a curly arrow goes from the bond, the CH bond, back into the ring. So that generates the four substituted product and we get an H plus ion. This comes off as an H plus ion. I haven't left myself much room here, but we now need to show the catalyst being regenerated which is shown by this equation here. So because I've gone for the AlCl3 catalyst, AlCl4 minus plus that H plus that's just come off, reforms the catalyst and we get HCl as well. Moving on to part B, K and L react with chlorine more readily than J. So that's because they're both phenols. So we say that the lone pair on the oxygen of the OH group becomes delocalized into the ring. That means the pi electron density is greater in K and L than in J. So K and L are more able to polarize, or you could say attract, the chlorine molecule. Moving on to part C, compound J reacted with acidified potassium dichromate 6 under reflux. You can see I've highlighted that to produce compound M. So this is an alcohol. It's a primary alcohol. So when you oxidize um, a primary alcohol under reflux, you get the carboxylic acid. So there's the equation there. We need two moles of the oxidizing agent because we've oxidized it first of all to the aldehyde and then to the carboxylic acid because it was reflux. But remember, you only get one mole of H2O formed. Moving on to part D, so the synthesis map. So what's happened in this part here, the nitro group has been substituted in this position here. So to do that, you'd react it with nitric acid. It's actually concentrated nitric acid, but they weren't bothered about the concentrated part. And you use a sulfuric acid catalyst, actually um, concentrated sulfuric acid, but again, they weren't bothered about the concentrated. The next part, going from NO2 to NH2, so 
obviously we're told it's a reduction reaction and the reducing agent is a mixture of tin with hydrochloric acid and the equation for the reduction stage, so we're going to use H in square brackets to represent the reducing agent. And for each mole of NO2 that's reduced, you need six moles of reducing agent and you make two moles of H2O. So moving on to part E. So basically what they've done in this um, synthesis is they've taken the OH group off there and stuck it on the other carbon. So we need to go via this intermediate, which is going to need to be an alkene. So how do we turn an alcohol into an alkene? We dehydrate it, we take the water out, and we use a concentrated acid to do that. And you can either go for sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid. So there's that written up there and the equation underneath. And then for stage two, we need to turn this alkene into the alcohol. So we're going to react it with steam and we're going to use an acid catalyst. So you've got to go for either of those again. So there's that written up there. Now you'll notice I've written H2O with the gaseous state symbol, implying that it's steam. If you didn't do that, you could then just say H2O and a temperature greater than 100 degrees C. That would be absolutely fine as well. So finishing off with part F, so there's benzoic anhydride. So they said we could use C6H5 as, um, for the phenyl group. There's my um, butanol. So basically what's going to happen in here, one of these C single bond O's will break and we're going to generate an ester and we're also going to generate benzoic acid. So there's your products there. It's obviously the ester and there's your benzoic acid.